Hey Rayleigh and anybody else watching and welcome back to another message from your father. So we are going to be looking at Zephaniah 1 through 3, which is the whole book, and then Haggai 1 through 2. Yesterday, uh, Nahum and Habakkuk, uh, we looked at God's anger at Nineveh. Again, this was for that second time. And then we also looked in Habakkuk about the larger problem of evil. So we're going to continue with these prophets today. Again, Zephaniah and Haggai. Uh, Zephaniah warns of the coming destruction, but also of a future light. Very important there. Uh, Haggai reminding God's people, and this is God's people fresh out of captivity, um, why things aren't going well. They need to renew their focus on God and not on themselves, not on rebuilding their houses or any of that, but on focusing on rebuilding uh, God's temple. So uh, again, Zephaniah 1 through 3 and Haggai 1 through 2. So Zephaniah 1. The word of the Lord came to Zephaniah, son of Cushi, the son of Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hezekiah, during the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah. I will sweep away everything from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. I will sweep away both men and animals. I will sweep away the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. The wicked will have only heaps of rubble when I cut off man from the face of the earth, declares the Lord. I will stretch out my hand against Judah and cut off all who live in Jerusalem. I will cut off from this place every remnant of Baal, the names of the pagan and idolatrous priests, those who bow down on the roofs to worship the starry host, those who bow down and swear by the Lord, and who also swear by Molech, those who turn back from the following, following the Lord and neither seek the Lord nor inquire of him. Be silent before the sovereign Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those he has invited. On the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the princes and the king's sons and all those clad in foreign clothes. On that day, I will punish all who avoid stepping on the threshold, who fill the temple of their gods with violence and deceit. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will go up from the fish gate, wailing from the new, from the new quarter, and a loud crash from the hills. Wail, you who live in the market district. All your merchants will be wiped out. All who trade with silver will be ruined. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Their wealth will be plundered, their houses demolished. Uh, they will build houses, but not live in them. They will plant vineyards, but not drink the wine. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. Listen, the cry on the day of the Lord will be bitter. The shouting will be the warrior there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the corner towers. I will bring distress on the people, and they will walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust, and their entrails like filth. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. In the fire of his jealousy, the whole world will be consumed, for he will make a sudden end of all who live on the earth. Chapter 2 Gather Together Gather together, O shameful nation, before the appointed time arrives, and that day sweeps on like a chaff before the fierce anger of the Lord comes upon you, before the day of the Lord's wrath comes upon you. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, you who do what he commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you will be sheltered on the day of the Lord's anger. Gaza will be abandoned and Ashkelon left in ruins. At midday, Ashdod will be emptied, Necron uprooted. Woe to you who live by the sea, O Carathite people. The word of the Lord is against you, O Canaan, land of the Philistines. I will destroy you, and none will be left. The land by the sea where the Carathites dwell will be a place for shepherds and sheep pens. It will belong to the rem remnant of the house of Judah. There they will find pasture. In the evening they will lie down in the houses of Ashkelon. The Lord their God will care for them. He will restore their fortunes. I have heard the insults of Moab and the taunts of the Ammonites who insulted my people and made threats against their land. Therefore, as surely as I live, declares the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, surely Moab will become like Sodom and the Ammonites like Gomorrah, a place of weeds and salt pits, a wasteland forever. The remnant of my people will plunder them. 
the survivors of my nation will inherit their land. This is what they will get in return for their pride, for insulting and mocking the people of the Lord Almighty. The Lord will be awesome to them when he destroys all the gods of the land. The nations on every shore will worship him, every one in his own land. You too, O Cushites, will be slain by the sword. He will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria, leaving Nineveh utterly desolate, as dry as the desert. Flocks and herds will lie down there, creatures of every kind. The desert owl and the screech owl will roost on her columns. Their calls will echo through the windows. Rubble and rubble will be in their doorways, and the beams of cedar will be exposed. This is the carefree city that lived in safety. She said to herself, I am, and there is none beside me. What a ruin she has become, a lair for wild beasts. All who pass by her will scoff and shake their fists. Chapter 3 Woe to the city of oppressors, rebellious and defiled. She obeys no one and accepts no correction. She does not trust in the Lord. She does not draw near to her God. Her officials are roaring lions. Her rulers are the evening wolves who leave nothing for the morning. Her prophets are arrogant. They are treacherous men. Her priests profane the sanctuary and do violence to the law. The Lord within her is righteous. He does no wrong. Morning by morning, he dispenses his justice, and every new day he does not fail, yet the unrighteous know no shame. I have cut off strongholds, or I have cut off nations, their strongholds are demolished. I have left their streets deserted, with no one passing through. Their cities are destroyed, no one will be left, no one at all. I said to the city, surely you will fear me and accept corrections. Then her dwelling would not be cut off, nor all her punishments come upon her but they were still eager to act corruptly in all they did. Therefore, wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day I will stand up to testify. I have gathered to assemble the nations, to gather the kingdoms, and to pour out my wrath on them, all my fierce anger. The whole world will be consumed by the fire of my jealous anger. Then I will purify the lips of the peoples, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord and serve him shoulder to shoulder. From beyond the rivers of Cush, my worshippers, my scattered people, will bring me offerings. On that day, you will not be put to shame for all the wrongs that you have done to me, because I will remove from this city those who rejoice in their pride. Never again will you be haughty on my holy hill, but I will leave within you the meek and humble who trust in the name of the Lord. The remnant of Israel will do no wrong, they will speak no lies, nor will deceit be found on their mouths. They will eat and lie down and no one will make them afraid. Sing, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away your punishment. He has turned back your enemy. The Lord, the King of Israel, is with you. Never again will you fear any harm. On that day, they will say to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands hang limp. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. He will take great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. The sorrows for the appointed feasts I will remove from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. At that time, I will deal with all who oppressed you. I will rescue the lame and gather those who have been scattered. I will give them praise and honor in every land where they were put to shame. At that time, I will gather you. At that time, I will bring you home. I will give you honor and praise among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your very eyes, says the Lord. And Haggai 1. In the second year of King Darius, on the first day of the sixth month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai to Zerubbabel, son of Shelatiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. This is what the Lord Almighty says. These people say the time has not yet come for the Lord's house to be built. Then the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Is it a time for you yourselves to be living in your paneled houses while this house remains a ruin? Now, this is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. You have planted much, but have harvested little. You eat, but never have enough. You drink, but never have your fill. You put on clothes, but are not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Give careful thought to your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring down timber and build the house so that I may take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You expected much, but see, it turned out to be little. What you brought home, I blew away. Why, declares the Lord Almighty. 
because of my house, which remains a ruin. Therefore, each of you is busy with his own house. Therefore, because of you, the heavens have withheld their dew and the earth its crops. I called for a drought on the fields and the mountains, on the grain and new wine, the oil, and whatever the ground produces, on men and cattle, and on the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel, son of Shelatiel, Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest, and the whole remnant of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the message of the prophet Haggai, because the Lord their God had sent him, and the people feared the Lord. Then Haggai, the Lord's messenger, gave this message to the Lord to his people. I am with you, declares the Lord. So the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, son of Shelatiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest, and the spirit of the whole remnant of the people. They came and began to work on the house of the Lord, Almighty, the Lord Almighty, their God, on the 24th day of the sixth month in the second year of King Darius. Chapter 2. On the 21st day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai, Speak to Zerubbabel, son of Shalatiel, governor of Judah, to Joshua, son of Josedach, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people. Ask them, Who of you is left saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, O Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord, and work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I have covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the, and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and the desired of all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, declares the Lord Almighty. The glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house, says the Lord Almighty. And in this place, I will grant peace, declares the Lord Almighty. On the 24th day of the ninth month, in the second year of Darius, the word of the Lord came to the prophet Haggai. This is what the Lord Almighty says. Ask the priests what the law says. If a person carries out consecrated meat in the fold of his garment, and that fold touches some bread or stew, some wine, oil, or other food, does it become consecrated? The priests answered, no. Then Haggai said, if a person defiled by contact with a dead body touches one of these things, does it become defiled? The priests replied, it becomes defiled. Then Haggai said, so it is with this people and this nation in my sight, declares the Lord. Whatever they do and wherever they offer is defiled. Now, give careful thought to this from this day on. Consider how things were before one stone was laid on another in the Lord's temple. When an, anyone comes to a heap of 20 measures, there were only 10. When anyone went to a wine vat to draw 50 measures, there were only 20. I struck all the work of your hands with blight, mildew, and hail, yet you did not return to me, declares the Lord. From this day on, from the, this 24th day of the ninth month, Give careful thought to this day when the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid. Give careful thought. Is there any seed left in the barn? Until now, the vat and the fine, vine tree and the pomegranate and the olive oil have not borne fruit. From this day on, I will bless you. The word of the Lord came to Haggai a second time on the 24th day of the month. Tell Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, that I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overturn royal thrones and shatter the power of foreign kingdoms. I will overthrow chariots and their drivers, horses and their riders will fall, each by the sword of his brother. On that day, declares the Lord Almighty, I will take you, my servant Zerubbabel, son of Shelatiel, declares the Lord, and I will make you like a signet ring, for I have chosen you, declares the Lord Almighty. So just two chapters in Haggai. But what a great message. I think that's my, my prayer for you, really, is that when looking at all the, all the distractions of life and all the things that are fun to think about and fun to do for yourself, if you're working on a project or something that you really enjoy, uh, maybe that's, I don't know, maybe that's Legos or a model or something that you're building, maybe you're writing a lot or or writing a lot of pictures, you're doing something or you're producing something, that stuff is fun to do. And it's important. God has given us that and given the abilities to do that. And that's very good and important. But that shouldn't detract from us giving glory to God first. I think that's so, so important. And unfortunately, really easy to forget 
but our first priority should be Christ and his kingdom and what God has done for us through his son. That should be what we speak to first. Again, it's, it's so easy to get distracted, but my prayer for you will be that you don't, and you always focus on the Lord first. Doesn't mean you can't have fun with all the other stuff that God has allowed us to have and to experience, but he should be always our first and most important target. Anyway, know that I love you. That's what I'm praying for you. For anyone else that's joining, as always, appreciate you so much, and I'll plan on seeing you tomorrow. Have a good one.